morning. You coming in then? Good morning, and what a show we've got lined up for you today. We really have. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without a visit from the one and only Sir Cliff Richard is in the house. Yes, he's dropping by the house very shortly, and that's not all, because comedian and loose women star Judy Love will be here as well. She'll be getting stuck into a plate of roast beef with proper Yorkshire puddings a little bit later. And Mr Sap Baines is here as well. Hello, with not one, not two, not three, but four delicious recipes. Lancashire last Lisa Goodwin Allen will be here as well. It's like powerhouses in today with an amazing recipe for scallops. And I'll be teaching you everything you want to know about making your own sauces in this week's Little Masters. It's such a packed show, I don't even have time to do a proper intro in for the brilliant Richard Burton. Hey! <laughs> Great to see you, pal. Great to see you. The, nice one see of the you. best bakers in the world. <laughs> what are you what are, you've brought with you are some amazing stuff. The crew have been diving into almond croissants, but what I are you going to do? I'll hold them back a bit. <laughs> exactly. No, I brought you some uh, mince pie. Well, mince pie with a twist. I'll show you how to do them later. So mince pie with a twist. Yep, absolutely. Do you have those in France? No. And when I came in England, I didn't like mince pie. <laughs> so they were just awful stuff. So what what do you have? Do you have the equivalent in France? I don't know there is anything in France for, no. for Christmas time now. No. So you've now fallen in love with mince pies. I right? love mince pies now. Right. The one I made. Uh, you'll see it's a nice, a nice little twist on it. Nice little French twist on mince pies. There we go. But we thought I'd kick things off today by making uh, some trout scotch eggs uh, that we're going to be from a special trout farm. It's about 20 miles away from here. But I'm going to do that with some nice little scrambled eggs with smoked trout. I'm very excited about it. So, well, you can dive into this as well. But the first thing we do is do our nice little scotch eggs. So first of all, for our scotch eggs, I've got some eggs over here. Good quality eggs. Six minutes. Uh, rolling boil like that, turn it down so the gently simmer doesn't break them up, leave them in cold water and peel them. They've just had six minutes to boil. Over here I've got some potato and I'm going to take some smoked trout. It's entirely up to you for this one. I'm going to introduce you to the trout family in a second, but we've got some, some hot smoked trout over here, which I'm going to utilise as well. You can have a taste of this, Richard. Uh, on, together with some of this smoked trout that I've got in here. I'm going to dice this lot up and flake the smoked trout in here and add that with a little bit of salt and pepper mixed to here. Happy with that so far? It's delicious. So I'm going to mix this all in, and then I'm getting... Yeah, sorry, you, want some, you can have some more. Have a taste of this pate as well, because I'm going to introduce you where it comes from in a second. But the idea of this, if you've got any leftover bits of smoked trout, bit of, bit of smoked salmon around at Christmas time as well, this just gives you a really great little sort of brunch time dish, but, you know, afternoon-y sort of dish as well. But it's a nice little starter as well if you wanted to. But you've got some beautiful smoked trout over here. That's going to go in there with the potatoes. And then all I'm going to do is then incorporate that, encase the egg around this. But you want to make sure you've got plenty of it in there. So I've got a little bit of this, this gin-cured one as well. We're just going to chop it all up together with the beetroot-cured one. That's going to get all diced up. Now, like I said, we're going to introduce you to this amazing trout farm. I'm quite fortunate to live around here because uh, trout and watercress, another thing that I'm going to use for this, is so popular around here. This, talk about local, it's from about 30 yards away from here. I know, you said. But amazing. if you travel up the road, like I said, north up the A34 towards Hungerford. We're going to speak to Lucy Handley now from Berkshire Trout. I can see you on the line, Lucy. I feel, I feel, Hello, that, we James. I feel like we don't need Zoom. I just need to open the window and shout. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, so close. First of all, so tell me about the farm then, first of all, before we talk about yourselves and who are running it now. Tell me about the farm, because this, this is not a new venture. This has been running for years and years. Yes, so the farm has been there since 1907. It was actually dug out in 1878, and it's been a restocking farm for most of its life. And uh, we replenish rivers and fisheries with beautiful rainbow and brown trout up and down the country. So, t so tell me, tell me about the process, because you, you, you and your partner, you, you, didn't your partner work at this fishery when he, he was? When he he was young did. Slave? He did. When he was 19, he actually applied to actually go and study at uh, Sparshall Agricultural College down near Winchester. And um, they said they'd like him to do a year's experience on a trout farm, which made a huge amount of sense. So he actually got in touch with the owner of Berkshire Trout and um, he spent a year on the farm where, as, as a 19-year-old when he had some hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. And, you, and he travelled the world as a trout specialist, I believe. Is that, it, I never knew there was such a thing as a trout specialist. That's a great job. But now I do now. What, what does it... I mean, assuming pretty busy, travelling all over the world with this. Yes, fascinating job. 
pre pre COVID, um, he was flying all over the world to places such as Turkey and Canada and even Russia, um, somewhere near St. Petersburg, um, advising on um, how to actually grow trout eggs um, to farms all over the world. Um, so that's something that he was very much enjoying. But of course, uh, things came to a little bit of a halt with uh, with the pandemic arriving. And, and, and how did you get involved in it then? How, how, were, you, were you sort of dragged in it through him? How did you get involved in it? Well, I was running my own marketing technology events company at the time. I, I, I used to work for a, a big telecoms company and then I set my own business up 20 years ago. And because it was in events, um, overnight we saw events just uh, um, domino falling due to the pandemic. And I lost quite a lot of business. And one day we sat down together uh, over a glass of wine and said, you know, what 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 should we do? And um, we we did obviously have some experience well john is specifically in uh, in running a trout farm he has been a trout farm manager before so um we we knew what we were doing but from the food side not at all we'd we'd never actually um uh, had a food business so this intrigues me so you 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 go into the tri trout farming business and, and how do you go about it was it was it trial and error at first it fascinates me people have never been involved in food that you then take something like this on you from a marketing background, in from a trout farming background, never actually cooked anything. Was it was it sort of a, a was it smoking your the trout in your, your back garden in your garage and that it kind was, of stuff? It absolutely was. We uh, bought a domestic smoker, and it was all trial and error of uh, getting the cure right and actually the amount of uh, time it took to smoke. Um, John, my my partner, um, uh, it was just amazing because he spent hours and hours and hours perfecting the trout that we have now. But yeah, it was a lot of trial and error. There was a lot of uh, heated debates, <laughs> but um, we got there. So tell me, tell me about tell me about the one that I've got in here. This is the this is the natural smoked trout do you treat it like smoked salmon is that how you got to treat it do you less less cure it what what's the difference between yours and doing smoked salmon then or is... it's pretty much the same yeah we we do um dry cure it in 50 50 of demerara sugar and salt for 24 hours and um the trout that we are actually uh, curing are i know i can show you on camera about this big <laughs> they're the ones that are too big for restocking right so they are similar size to salmon um and uh so the the, the curing process as i said is 24 hours and i say that i've got the, the nice little bit of scotch eggs hopefully you can see these or the 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 trout scotch eggs that then gets lifted out in there, but these are fab. <laughs> yeah, you like it? <laughs> Richard's happy with these as well. So, But you've also got the gin-cured ones. These are perfect for Christmas as well. This would be great because so everybody has smoked some, but trout's got a unique flavour to it, isn't it, really? I, I love it. It's one of those things I think been been around in this area for the last 25 years. I, I've fallen in love with this sort of stuff. You've only got to go out of here and you've got the rivers and you see the beautiful watercress over here. But the marriage of the watercress and the trout, I mean, the mayflies, I mean, it's just a magical, magical thing to see. It's wonderful. I have to say, I think the uh, the area that you live in and the area we live in, we're, we're, it's it, it's wonderful. I think, I think. what do you think of it, really, as well? Um, you... I love it. Uh... Do you have an abundance of it in France? Or I don't see much trout in France. Not, not smoked trout, not as much. I think it's, you see it coming up the past few years, smoked trout. I, I prefer smoked trout than smoked salmon. Yeah, it's, it's such a different flavour. It's flavor. so much refined taste. It's yeah. so beautiful. And I love the ginger, uh, the ginger, the beetroot, sorry, and gin, the ginger, gin. Well, that beetroot cure or something like that is so delicious, whether, it, whether it's done with a little bit of treacle or everything else. So I'm just going to recap what I'm going to be doing, see if you're happy with this recipe. But we've got in here a little bit of French dressing. We're going to take a touch of vinegar. Um, I thought with a Frenchman been here, we've got to do the classic <laughs> French dressing. So a little bit of water, that's the key to it. Touch of vinegar, bit of water. Mix that together with vegetable oil, not olive oil. Yep. Vegetable oil, mix that together, and that's your classic sort of French vinaigrette. Yep. And if you put that little bit of water in as you're mixing it, it goes nice and creamy. And it's the water you need to add, otherwise it just looks like it's split. And we're going to take this with our nice little bit of salad over the top. So in here, I've, uh, what I love about this, I've got watercress in here, but I, I love chicory. This sort of, I, I love these leaves. These, sort of, mm. these rich leaves we've got on there. And we're going to take the leaves of that, sits in here. And meanwhile, I'm going to get on and do our scrambled egg in a second, because that happens quite quickly. So I've got my scotch egg, which 
Your big one for you. Oh, come that on. One. Yeah. Bigger, that, one, that one. So we can then just cut this straight down the middle. And look. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so you've got this runny yolk in the centre with your scotch egg, like that. And then, with this one, with the scrambled eggs, really, really simple. So, I don't know why people mess this up, but the key to this is the French have this unique name called Bavus. Bavus. which is amazing. So you season that, salt and pepper, which means slightly underdone, correct? Or... Yeah, Bavus is runny. Yeah, Bavis, so runny. Bavus is drooling. Runny, so you want runny. that with the egg, and you get that through the, basically the use of a little bit of double cream. You can use milk, but we just beat up the eggs. I always add a touch of cream to this. Double cream, yeah. Double cream to this. Mix that up. And then, hot pan on the stove. Not too hot, because we don't want to brown this butter too much. But this sits in here. So the idea is you cook the eggs without colour. So take those off a little bit. Then we add our egg. And once it goes in, you don't stop. So I put some salt and pepper in here already. Black pepper's gone in here. Salt's gone in here. And you see this happens quite quickly. You want to mix it like that. As it starts to thicken up, you can see it starting to thicken up now. There. And as it thickens up, we then just take it off the heat now. That's now ready. But take it off the heat. That's my perfect breakfast. We're going to add our smoked trout to it. Mix this together. That is fine. Perfect. And then we just take that off. And we take our scrambled egg. And we serve that with it. Hopefully, Lucy, that's done your product justice. A little bit of that. I'm feeling very, very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks well, absolutely... Well, I could walk up and send you it, to be honest with you. You're that close. But we take a nice little bit of watercress. I think whichever one you do, be it a little yeah, trout yeah. scotch egg or a little bit of scrambled egg with smoked trout, either one is delicious. But thanks for joining us as well. I wish you all the very best of luck with it. <laughs> best of luck. Next time I'm coming up there, I'll come and take you a visit. Take care. Take Happy care. Christmas. Thank you. Happy Christmas to you. So there we have it. So trout two ways, one with scrambled egg, one with a scotch egg. Done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
and you let it rest. And when you let it rest, make sure you keep it flat. Okay. Not in cling film, on wrapping. You can. All oh, right. So not in cling film. In never. Paper. never. So why? Why, why paper, that? Because well, when you buy it in supermarket, it's not coming in cling film, does it? No. But, but... So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because. So it's it, one you, if you when you make it, roll it flat, yeah. put it in greaseproof paper, and freeze it. So you get stack of pastry always in your freezer. Okay. And then when you want it, when you undo it, then it's so much easier to roll. Now you just start to get this just a little bit before you add the sugar. So little peaks forming. Yeah. Little shard. Then you put your sugar. Then in you there put the sugar in, yeah. And beat it well. Okay. And also when I roll my pastry, uh, what I do, I use a, a bit of. You can use flour. But you can use also a combination of flour and semolina, very fine semolina. Semolina flour? Very fine semolina, yeah. So this is what you'd use for doing sort of pizza and pasta and, yeah, and that, that kind of stuff. All right. So you give a bit of crispiness as you want to do it. OK. And then just going to roll it up. So obviously, it's flat already. obviously baking, baking has now gone crazy over the last sort of 10 years in the UK, yeah. thanks to a certain programme, but it, everybody's now baking. But baking was in your blood as a young kid. That's all you ever wanted to do, wasn't it, in France? Well, yes and no. You know, I was not... Dyslexic, you know, so I was not very bright at school. So I had to live, not, not bright, I, was, I had to learn in different ways. I had to work with my hand and do something with my hand. Well, I'm dyslexic as well. But yeah. you, you, where you, you were sort of, you lose in one way, I think you gain in ten ways. Oh, uh, massively. Because you, you, yeah. you, it enables you to concentrate so much more, don't you? You've seen differently. And, you know, if you told me when I was 14, I'd be a teacher. Yeah. I'd be laughing, you know. Um, so the teaching element is what I love doing now. I love having people at the school, you know, teaching yeah. the mince pie, teaching all little tricks, you know, yeah. when you cook so bad tricks. Yeah. So people can take this back at home and do it. So it's, uh, it's very good. And this is still to keep it nice and short as well, I suppose. Too much flour, it ends up just it's changing well, the recipe. If your pastry stick too much when you make it and you put flour, it's going to crack. Right. So make your pastry stick to the recipe, put it flat into some graceful pepper and cool it down and then you try it. So once we get to this stage, you start to beat this, beat, change its colour a little bit. Yeah, it will change colour. Then your almond can go in now. Then you add your almonds. These are just normal ground almonds. Normal They're ground going almond. in. So same, it's the same um, quantity of butter, sugar, and almonds. So it's called temporton in French. Right, okay. They go in. And at what point do you add your flour? Back so, now? No, wait a tiny bit longer. Okay. So you can break your eggs while you're waiting. It's a learning process, you see, while you're doing <laughs> this. A bit of that goes in there. So the idea is to get this nice and thin, I take it. Is this what yeah, you're thin, doing? Yeah, thin. It depends how you lay like your pastry, but. I think for the mince pie, you don't want it too thin, too thin, but just right. just the right. I can just use with the, the board now, so see, it's not too bad there. I mean, you must love it, don't you? The, the fact that the UK has embraced baking, I suppose. But that's at the heart of French cookery, isn't it, really? I mean, every family bakes, every family makes their own stuff. I think the thing with baking, it just brings people together. So in the kitchen, if you make you know, a stolen, if you make some bread, just humble bread, and you sell it to your family, it brings something to you, you know? It's a, it's something about baking the, the smell, especially at Christmas, the spice, you know. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal, so... So I've added the flour over here. So you then just cut this out just to make the perfect... Get a cutter, feed them in. And with the eggs, you just add them one by one now. Yeah, so one at a time, yeah. put them faster, faster speed. And then add another one, another one, yeah. and this keeps it nice. Taking your time, so it's nice and light all the time, yeah. And then the idea is to then use a little bit of rum to flavour this, is it? So, yeah. But it's not to flavour, I call it to season. Because it's made from sugar, it will bring... I like your attitude. It's not to... <laughs> not, it's just a season. Well, if you... If you, if you put any other alcohol, you add flavour. But I don't like almond essence, and I don't like almond extract. I think yeah. it's got... It's chemically, it's not it's, the same. I don't like it. The rum, if you test it before and after, it could be different. Yeah. So you can use any good cheap rum, you know. Just a big dollar for that yeah. in there. Turn this down a little bit. You've got this amazing roll. A bit more, it's Christmas. A bit more. <laughs> a bit more going in. There you go. That's great, 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 great. That produces amazing frangipan. Look at that. That's how to do it. So if you want to do your own little frangipan tart, that's now you know how to do it. So I'm just going to have a quick shake down of this. And we've got one in the oven that smells amazing. I'm just going to check that, actually, yeah. to make sure these are all right. Won't be long. So these, do you allow allow this to rest now or not? No, you don't have to. Yeah. I know the you want these to rest before you do anything with it, but these oh, are what these perfect, are what we're going to Perfect, perfect, perfect. Look at this. Okay. Absolutely fantastic. I love that smell. And the, the mince meat is, uh, is special as well. Right, I've got a little <laughs> spatula over here. So once you got to that stage, fill it full of your mince meat. Yeah. There we go. It's you don't, you don't have present. anything like this in France, do you, really? Mince meat, no, it's a, it's a very British thing. It's like Christmas pudding and Christmas cake. And we've we got fruit cake. But Christmas for us is more like a Bougie Noël and all that type of things. You yeah. Know? So 
Which you can explain what that is. What what is that? The bûche de Noël. Yeah. It's a log. You know. Yeah. <laughs> A yule log. Yule log, exactly. Yeah. But uh, the tradition of it is amazing, you know. So. And it would be filled with what? What do you normally fill it with? Well, you, there's so many fashionable ones. Usually it was always a, a chocolate genoise, you know, with uh, some buttercream inside. And it's all decorated with uh, all sorts of things. Oh, look at this. And the key to that is not overfill these. I think that's the... Because no, particularly this don't be gritty. I want them to be bad size. You yeah. Know? I'd rather it's three that feel guilty than the one. When you one. had a bakery, now you've you've sold it. You've nothing to do with that anymore. You've got no. the cookery school. Yeah. Is it something you want to go back into? Because I get the feeling with you, do, you know, are you just happy with the cookery school? That's, that's I'm just... happy. I love teaching. Yeah. I've done the bakery. Because um, it's the hours and everything. I mean, the... it's not that. It's just it, it becomes such a big monster. Yeah. Um, that you spend a lot, lot of time managing, and I miss part of it, but not not the whole management of it. Yeah. So. That's it. So we used to make town and, and town and of them. So these are the frangipan pan over the top. Again, don't yeah. overfill it because it's just going to. This is yeah. going to spread as well, isn't it? Really. Yeah. But it's good. I've seen it copied many times. You market. Yeah. Of course. No name. <laughs> <laughs> and the almonds over the top. And almond give you that crunchiness. And don't skimp on the almond because all the leftover almond when they fall over, I keep them all. Yeah. So I can use them into stolen. I can use them to yeah. to do other things. Or to make sauce with it, you know? I think I was like yourself. When I was growing up, I wasn't a great fan of mince pies. And then you, you taste one that's made properly, you go, well, yeah, now, I, say, now I know what's happening. It's like everything. When, when you test where you should, should it's not, where it should be like every, does their own opinion. Yeah. But for me, when my first mince pie of the year, when I make one, it's just, oh, God. <laughs> it's amazing. So, so you're yeah. going to cook that 180 degrees. I'm going to bake them. Yeah. <laughs> don't cook them, <laughs> bake them. 180 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, so which we've got, got on here. Now, I know you yeah. want to finish these off as well, but we've got to... We, should be... we, can't, we can't not this... talk about which we've got over here. You've got this amazing Stollen, so tell us about these. Oh, that's the one we did last year, do you remember? I do remember this, A small yeah. bath of rum and butter. <laughs> I mean, this is... When you see this being made, it is just incredible, but... This is, this is again, so... You just allow these to soften up a little bit? Well, they just set a bit more, so hopefully they don't stick. It's not your first rodeo, is it? Look at that. You've done this a few times before. Oh, yes. Yeah. And this Stollen as well. So explain to us what the, what the dough is for the Stollen. So the Stollen, what I've done, again, I, didn't, I was never a big fan of Stollen. I find it a bit hard. And so what we've done is like a kind of a very light sweet dough, stuffed with fruit, rum, again, kind of a yeah. natural ingredient. Um, and we put some, uh, again, some of the frangipan on the middle, put a tiny bit of marzipan, not too much because I don't like it that much either, and then fold it over. Seal it, let it prove, bake it in the oven. And when they cool down, we melt a lot of butter and a lot of rum and we bath it in there. It is. For a few minutes. <laughs> and then we'll rate it in sugar. It is. Um, bathed in rum. It's the best stolen I've ever tasted. You know it is. It's brilliant. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So dusting with a little bit of ice and sugar. Yeah, a bit of ice and sugar on top. And a mince pie with no lid. You've got your own lid with the frangie pie. Absolutely. So give us the name of this dish. I suppose there is Mr. Richard Bertonet's mince pies. Le mince pie. That's it, <laughs> le mince pie. Richard Bertonet, everybody. Thank you. Well, it certainly smells like Christmas now. Can I have a taste of these? And what, what have you got over here? Because that, that can smell like Christmas as well. That's What's one that? we serve in our, during our baking class, a Christmas right. baking class. So it's, it's a mixture of uh, this much cider, this much rum, and this much Calvados. And then when you drink everything, you got the apple. Any leftover frangipan and pastry, you make a tart with it. It's the most delicious. These, these are the... What do you think? As I, a Yorkshireman, I know, I know as a Yorkshireman, come on, you tell well, me. These, these are the best mince pies I've tasted. They are, because oh, they, they are. They are fantastic. Mm. Paste is thin. Mm. Well, if you can't cook mince pies better than anybody else, then you shouldn't be here, could you, really? Have to, have to. Richard Burton, everybody. Thank you. The man's a legend. Right, we're enjoying another dish for another legend, Lisa goodwin Allen. in just a minute. And the multi mission star chef, Sat Baines, will be here sharing some mouth-watering mm. recipes of his own a little bit later. But join us again after the break, we'll be serving up a stunning cod dish for Sir Cliff Richard. See you after the break.
Welcome back. Now, coming up, we'll be enjoying a cracking recipe of scallops, courtesy of chef Lisa Goodwin-Allen, and comedian Judy Love will be joining me at the house very shortly. But first, I'm going to raise a glass. I'm delighted to introduce you to a true icon of British music who has sold a staggering 300 million <laughs> records. 300 million records! And created some of the most memorable Christmas songs in chart history. It's the one and only Sir Cliff Richard! Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome nice, back. Nice to be back. Welcome back. It's, it seems like we, we can't do this show without you, really. I know, but you're the only one I know that can interview and cook at the same time. Well, that's put pressure on me now, anyway. <laughs> we'll, give it, we'll give it a go, anyway. So, yeah. I, I know you love your food. I know food is a big passion of your entire life as well, uh, like music. We're going to just... I'm going to create a wonderful little dish. It's a little bit of spice roast cod with a nice little bit of sauce. We're going to do that with tamarind. It's really, really simple, really nice. We've got some roasted cod over here. Beautiful line caught cod. I'm taking a couple of chunks out of this and I'm going to roast it off in the pan. Now, first of all, I, I, reading about you and reading the stories about it, I just find it absolutely fascinating. But when you were a young kid, walking down that high street, yeah. when you were a young kid, you heard that music. This was in the 50s. Yeah. And, and you heard, was it right, it was playing in a, in a car and you heard this track? There was a car pulled up and the window was down. The, the, Engine was running and the radio was on, but the guy jumped out, I don't know, by cigarettes or a magazine or something. And we came and we were looking at that, and then suddenly we heard, Since my baby left, you can find a new place. Well, and I'm thinking, we, and then the guy got in the car and drove off, and we didn't even know who it was, but it, it changed my life. It was when I heard that that I thought, I want to do that, I want to be like and that. And that was Elvis. That was Elvis Presley, Heartbreak Hotel. And the other interesting thing, Elton John, he's got a book as well. I don't know when he wrote it, but he said a similar thing. He heard Elvis and he said he felt that nothing was ever going to be the same again. Well, you say that. I mean, music wasn't the same again because the 50s right. must have missed them a magical era to be in. Because it was open to so many different things, wasn't it? Really? It was. It's a, I described it in my book as a tsunami of music came over. One minute, we were listening to Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald, and the next minute, it was Elvis Presley, Little Richard, Buddy Holly. But it was a, a fantastic change, and if you were 15, or as I was at, what, 15 when I first heard Elvis, there was nothing else to listen to. And for also me. for you overnight, because, you know, you venturing at 15 years old, you thought, I I've got to do this. No musical experience? No, not played an instrument, anything? No, my you dad... You end up buying this, buying this guitar, yeah. self-taught. Well, my dad taught me the first three chords, and then yeah. for years I believed... Well, for months, I believed that there were only three chords in rock and roll, because <laughs> you could play all shook up or move it. There's three chords are quite a lot of music when you realise it. That's right, yeah. And then suddenly, uh, Ricky Nelson came out with a song called Poor Little Fool, and there was a fourth chord. I went, what? There's four chords in rock and roll? Yeah. And it was C, A minor, F and G. And the A minor was new to me. So we're going to fast forward. You, you then, I mean, the, the rise for you was stratospheric. <laughs> but I've got to talk about the Drifters and, and that era. Yeah. When you put that band together, what, 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 what was the catalyst for that? Because, you know, music can be quite brutal. You, 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 you made the decision, you got rid of some, certain, certain people in the band. Yeah. Guitarist as well. I have to do that. Just yeah. so happened to employ Hank Marvin, which is not too bad. A, <laughs> not too, not bad, too bad, bad a choice, is it really? <laughs> why, 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 how did you meet Hank and why, why was that catalyst? Well, the three of us had, had already started a little band and we played local pubs and things like that. Yeah. And earned a little bit of money, but we got quite clever. One pub, particularly, where the guy used to pay us, pay us in coins. Yeah. We, we got a few fans turned up. People came to have their drinks there and they quite liked us. And we said to them, Can you pay? with uh, paper money. So a lot more of that, we got paper money. We got, we, we doubled our income. <laughs> you doubled your income. Uh, but that was a magical time for you, Reed. Was when, was, when was the moment where you got spotted? Did you still have to, there's a little story where you doing demo tapes in Oxford Street and all the bits and pieces like that. Was that we made, for a fiver and bits Yeah, we recorded two songs. One was a Jerry Lee Lewis song and one was an Elvis song called Lordy Miss Claudie. And that was given by the guy that was an acting manager, I mean, he, he wasn't really a manager, but he came and said to us, <laughs> I can make you a star. And right. we picked ourselves off the floor after having l laughed him off. Anyway, he took this demo and gave it to a, a, an agent. Yeah. The agent took the demo 
and something else to Nori Paramore, the, promo, the, the producer of EMI. And EMI, Nori told me he played him a track, wasn't me. And he said, look, I've got, I've got singers like that. Have you got anything else? And George Ganju, who was the agent, said, well, I've got this. I love it. Nori played it and said, bring him in. <laughs> so it was as sharp as that, we came in, we auditioned. And in, in the bus, my ex, we had a, now our third guitarist. He had written Move It on the bus. And so we played Move It, and Hinori said, I'll see you in the studios. <laughs> and all these stories and more are in the book because you go on to say that, you know, your industry is not just about yourself. This is about accumulation of everybody in involved in it. Influences. None yeah. of us. I'm trying to make sure people understand that none of us Make it ourselves. It's so I've just, I've just got the. I mean, the book is just full of stories. I mean, Bobby Rydell. This is named the name so cool. He named the name Greece the high school after him. Rydell, Rydell, the Rydell, Rydell high. school. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. That's what. That's a legacy and a half, isn't it? He didn't have many, many big hits, but he has success. Loads what, of it. What do you? I, I fascinates me every time I talk to you about what do you. What do you put it down to in terms of your life, your career? Because I know you work incredibly hard. You, you do work hard. Yes, you do, but in the end, there's... Only the public can really explain it, and even they can't explain it. You can say to I say, what, what did you like about me? And they go, well, we just, well, we just liked you. So in the way, the, the public, and they have always been the ones, you can make a record that you think should be number one, and it won't make it. Yeah. And it, you have to convince the, aud the audience that they want to buy it. And I mean, I'm and you thinking, have to keep I'm, going. No, that's the, you, you take knocks to, in the industry. You don't stop. You keep going. Yeah. And I, I'm saying one of the most requested songs for me to sing on stage is a song called Miss Unites. It's like singing Honey, <laughs> but it didn't make it. I think it just crept into the top ten, and now it's the most requested song for me to do. So I, I did it on stage, and I said, look, this song did not make number one. And I looked at them all and said, it, and it wasn't my fault. You didn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> now, as well, as if that wasn't enough, you bring out a book. You've also got bringing out another album. You just finished a tour last month as well. Yeah, just, uh, yes, I finished in Glasgow and it was only an eight-day tour. Not Only an eight-day tour. This, well, yeah. the, the album, what, what number album is this on, on, on the list? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. But it's an unusual album in that the songs, people might recognise the songs, so they've been re I've released them before. But what they did was they took my voice off the original records and took the band away. And so what they did was they put an orchestration behind it. Well, and to hear, I, I mean, I loved it. Hearing Carrie, the song Carrie, um, done with just a gentle guitar and an orchestration, strings, wired for sound with strings. Yeah. Do you want the song wired for sound? We are, I do. Yeah. Bit, yeah. <laughs> so, well, we're just going to show you in, in action. Just take, take a look at this. While I'm frying my garlic, we'll be back in about 30 seconds. Have a look at this. <laughs> Young ones, when was that? Oh, that was just came from the film, and that would have been in 1961, something like that. Uh, what is amazing when it, when you listen to this album as well, you've got a bit of bluesy. There's a when you put the the, the, the jazzy bluesy notes with it when you put the, well, the, the strings to it. But the, yeah, the, the, my voice came from where it was. Uh, the, the, I didn't change anything. I did ask them to find something different for Living Doll and Summer Holiday because in the originals I tended to use a more breathy voice. Yeah, and it, it's a, and they've turned out to be really good. <laughs> Jazz songs. It's a, like a jazz backing, trombones, saxophones, and things. Well, I wish so you a... all the very best with it. And what what does Christmas 
bring you? Where, whereabouts in the world are you travelling to? What are you going to do this Christmas? Where I've, are you going to spend I've, it? I've got, at this moment, I'm just going to go back to the States to visit some friends. But, you know, ch Christmas has changed. When, when, when my nephews and nieces were children, they used to come to my house with, with my sister and we celebrate Christmas with everybody. But, of course, they're all married now. They go to their, their in-laws for, for Christmas. So Christmas doesn't stop, though. Well, my house is always open for you and we'll always feed you. Is that right? And we'll always... You can always... But you've got a nice little bit of roast cod to start with. But there we have it, roast cod with a nice little sauce to go with it. That's the tamarind. I've got a little bit of spice in there, some ghee, some garlic, and the, the uh, tamarind. And then we're going to just serve that with a little bit of coriander. So hopefully I've done it justice, interviewed at the same time while I've been cooking. They're and brilliant. You, and you've still got all your fingers. I've still got all my fingers, <laughs> and I've not burnt myself. Cliff Richard! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Right, there we have it. Hey. All yours. Have a taste of that with the sauce, everything else. Try and stop me. The fish. <laughs> look, it's just the beautiful... I mean, look at that. Oh, line, look at that. Oh. Line caught cod with a little bit of the brown sauce with it as well. Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, then, isn't it? It's terribly good. It's super tasty. Um, uh, fantastic. Well, you're going to stick around. We've no. got chicken for you at the end of the show, but oh, there we okay. have it. Oh, Cliff Richard, right. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, we'll be joining us later on this morning. I'll be laying on beef and Yorkshire pudding for the very funny Judy Love shortly as well. But join me again after the break when we've got more incredible cooking on the way, this time from Lisa Goodwin Allen. See you after the break. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Welcome back. Now, comedian and loose women star Judy Love will be here at the house very shortly and they'll be making a little mask class in your own sauces. That's coming away a little bit later. But first, I'm here with Richard and Sat and we're about to taste a cracking recipe from an old friend of ours who's been serving first-class cuisine in a Lancashire kitchen for more than 20 years. It's Lisa Goodwin Allen. <laughs> Yes. Wonderful to have you. So, you right, where are we going to? What are we going to be making then? What are we going to do? We're going to do a little uh, almond crusted scallop um, with uh, smoked, like a smoked pepper sauce and some chorizo and uh, brioche breadcrumbs. So this is it, kind of a mescoy sort of flavours when you look at yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, and I think you know it's a beautiful kind of flavours at this time of year with the smoked red pepper, mm. the chorizo, and stuff like that, and just really tasty. Um, I think it goes really well with the scallop. They look beautiful the scallops. Mm. So nice. Really nice. Exactly, but. Well, anyway, we just can basically take the, the that all goes in here. Yep. With the brioche crumb, and you're just going to mix this. This this becomes a little crust that you're making on the top of the scallop. That's right? it. Yeah. So we're just going to sear the scallops, and then we've made the crust. You'll put it between the two sheets, lightly freeze it so we can cut it out. Right. And then we'll just pop it on the scallops, and then just grill it so it starts it to melt on the top. Isn't it? Yeah. So what's in that mix? So, so you've got uh... um, butter, um, chorizo, so the soft yep. one and uh, some brioche breadcrumbs to so finish it with a little bit of lemon juice. And this becomes the crust. That's it, Now, yeah. for anybody who hasn't been to your neck of the woods, the, you're kind of like... I, <coughs> I equate your bit up there is kind of like the, so the, the Raymond Blanc bit of Oxfordshire. Yeah. Well, it is. Well, it, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it is. It's one of the, it's, do you know what? More, more like Ray White. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what? It's ga the gastronomic capital up there. Yeah. You've got. Yeah. You kind of. You, you. You're up there on your own. You've got this amazing little. I mean. Yeah, we're doing. We're doing good. An amazing place. We're keeping yeah. going. And the produce from up there is incredible. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, we're very lucky. Really lucky. There's some fantastic ingredients and stuff like that. How long has the hotel actually been running now? Not, not with you at the helm. How long has it God, been, it's been there? It's been going for years. Probably 40, 50 years, I think yeah. it's been. From, like, you, an old you... little manor house to what it is now. But you've been just... working there a long time before you took over the range yourself. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, and I think the reason is it's just developed so much from just being a house that was turned into, like, a small restaurant and then to what it is now is, um, it's really good. So this is the, this is the crust that we've made. You want this rolling out in between two That's bits of... That's it, yeah, two roll two it out and then you just freeze it to kind of um, set it. You can do this. Yeah, you can do it prior, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's not, it's, I mean, we're crusting a scallop, but you could actually... Um, you can put it on anything, so any white fish, anything like that, salmon, it's just a really nice kind of lovely flavour on there. So a bit of that, nice and thin, and then we've got one that we've got over here as well. That's that. So what are you making then? Are you making the sauce for Yeah, so I'm making the sauce here. So I've got some shallots. Just uh, finely slice them and cook them down. 
And so they're nice and soft. And I just finished it with some white wine and some perno. We've got a little bit of tomato stock here that we've done. Um, you could use vegetable stock if you wanted. And it's basically tomatoes, some sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of Tabasco, some chilli, some ginger. And you just beat it all or put it into, the, um, into a blender, crack it, and then just hang it. And you get this oh, wow. really nice, clear juice. So that's like a consomme. You just yeah. blend it all up and then just, that's just it, let yeah. it drip overnight. And I think, for me, it's like we're working on just a few flavours. Mm. The chorizo, the almond and the tomato, but really pulling the flavour out in them. I mean, these particularly, this, these scallops. Oh, I've very never very seen yeah. better scallops this Pristine, year yeah. than yeah, I've seen scallops. anywhere. I know you, look, you use a lot of scallops yeah. as well. But the, do you get yours from Orkney? Is that what you're getting? Yeah, from, uh, yeah, from yeah we get it from the, uh, there and the Honest Sky and all that. Yeah, these, yeah. these, I've never seen them as good as this this year. Uh, the just absolutely it's amazing. Very consistent on the yeah. shoe as well, which yeah. I thought was incredible. So there's your there's your skull. She don't need the shells. Uh, that's it. No, no, we're not going to use the shells. Ashtrays. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Right, so I've just put the uh, the shirizo in there. So yeah. you kind of want a soft, uncooked one. We'll get that nice and hot. So this becomes the sauce for that's it. That's it. Yeah. So we're just going to blend it all together. So it'll just all blend Beautiful. and make it lovely. Now, while that's blending, sauce. we've got to talk about what you've got coming up because you, as soon as Christmas finishes, you, which I'm presuming is crazy time anyway, yeah, it's, for you uh, with the hotel yeah, and everything. It's else. Non-stop. You then go straight into this little thing called obsession, which yes. has become sort yeah, of an obsession. Yeah. It's become quite unique in terms of. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been going for this will be the 23rd year, right? Um, and every year. It's just got well. Towards ten years, it got bigger and bigger, and then we stopped it at seventeen nights. We're like, that is just enough now. Yeah. Um. So we have seventeen nights, a different chef every night, and um, that comes in and cooks in the kitchen. And um, we're very lucky. You got a big kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. No, yeah. Um. We're lucky do, because of the that. kitchen you, size you that can really. Um, you know, give us the. But you never had that nice kitchen work. before. I no, remember doing it. Do you remember doing it in the old kitchen? I remember it, that kitchen, yeah. Where I think you used this, to get the coal and that, shovel it in. They had a solid top stove in the old fashioned kitchens. It was Cracking this metal it. stove with a gas thing <laughs> with the massive cracks in it. And just as you went, don't touch it, I put a pan and the whole thing <laughs> fell like sort of some chessboard just disappearing. Down, you had to pick it all you up and put it together. You've also managed to get some incredibly brilliant chefs, haven't you, over the years, yeah, from all over incredible. the world? Yeah, it's been amazing, it's, isn't it? um, We've been very, very lucky. I mean, like yourself and lots of different people from, from all, all over the world. The world. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been incredible. That's pretty good. <laughs> so the scallops, you're just going to park up these and finish them off under the grill? That's yeah? it, yeah. So we just park up them to get a real nice crisp and caramelisation on the outside. Now, these will take a little bit longer. If they were smaller, you're just doing kind of for a minute and out. So that's your so that's your sauce. This is the one that you've that, yeah, that's the one you've blended because I didn't want to make yep. too much of a racket. But that's that. And then you're going to put these on here. Do you want me to cut, that, cut these out? With yes, the... please. They're checking out the butter already. Mm. I love the nuts in there. Happy with that? What do you we... think? To, what do you think to the brioche? Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> Bit of that over the top. That's lovely. Isn't it? They're big scallops, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yeah. It's taking a little bit longer though, son. Yeah, beautiful. It'll take a bit of time on the grill anyway. Yeah. That's what it does. Yeah, Give him a little bit of time under the grill. So the reason why you're squeezing them, you just want a little bit of firmness to That's it. That's it, it, yeah. You just want to see, get them all nice. Happy with this on the top? Grill. That's it. Over the top like that. And then these just going to go yeah, under the grill. Yeah, just put them under the grill and they just kind of like, you know, really crust up. All right. Right, so that's that, and then you're going to do the little garnish with it as that's well. So it, they're going yeah. to go under. These want minutes, don't they? Yeah, no, no more probably than a minute. about yeah, a minute or two. Probably a little bit longer just because they're a bit bigger. And um, the idea is just to, to grill them all on the top so it goes. Okay, nice so in. what's next? You've got the sauce done. Yeah, so we've got the sauce here, so we're just going to heat that up. So we blend it so it's nice and smooth. We've got a little bit of chorizo there as well, some more almonds, and then just a little bit of um, chorizo oil. Chorizo oil. oil, and what's the green oil? What... That's just a little bit of uh, herb oil, dill oil. Lovely. <clears throat> <clears throat> I love all these little sort of lotions and potions. You That's it, uh, yeah, yeah. I, th I think, you know, I think a really good dish is brought together by an amazing, delicious sauce. Mm -hmm. So you can do something that's, you know, quite just a lovely piece of fish with a sauce, I think, is uh, really tasty. And like I said, you can use it, you can cover that with any, any fish. Well, white yeah, fish would can. be lovely. Yeah, yeah, white fish, like anything like cod, turbot, anything mm -hmm. like that is really, is really delicious. Um, tomatoes, I think, you know, when you get some really ripe ones as well, they've got a fantastic flavour to them. Put a good as if that might be in a restaurant in Nottingham as well. By the oh, getting worried now, look at exactly. <laughs> it. Just go to the website and get the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I'll be watching Peach, out for you. Lisa did the beef last year with a crust on oh, top. The crust on top. Oh, that was oh, amazing. Oh, my yeah. God, that was just the best piece of beef ever. So then we just put some of these so delicious. kind of bits of shirt in there. Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. And then... Yeah. I don't know why, when I look at you, I just keep looking, going, right, said Fred? <laughs> 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 I think Fred went left here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm just looking at it again. Just a little bit of my so past there. It's so rude. <laughs> no, hey, it's hey so... Chief, you're nearly there. I'm nearly Don't there. Don't knock it. A long way off yet, Chief. <laughs> I knew better. <laughs> right, there we go. That's it, you want to put them... No, I'll let you do that. So you're going to do, do it. So you put the oil on it as well. Yeah, that's it. And then we're just going to pop the scallop right into the centre. Oh, wow. That is massive. It's sinking through. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's like a turnip. Like <laughs> it looks amazing though, that, doesn't it? There we go. Happy with that? So give us the name Absolutely. of this dish. So we've got a little um, almond crusted scallop with uh, smoked pepper and sweet sauce. Beautiful. She's a legend. Lisa, everybody. <laughs> Big one? Yes, please. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> there we Thank go. Thank you. Dive into that one. This looks... I'm going to grab a spoon. Is that, that looks... Looks amazing. Oh. Oh, God. That sauce is incredible. <laughs> sauce is unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. What a different like. texture. And mm. so the best tomato soupy, soupy flavour. It's got <clears throat> the piquancy, the, the... It's almost like the perfect seasonal dish, isn't it, for this time of year? Yeah. Got a bit of heat. That's delicious. Now you can relax. That's it. <laughs> Lisa, That's everybody. Brilliant. brilliant, that. Thank you. Uh, right, so we're trying to top Trump Lisa and Richard's recipe later on this morning, and I'll be teaching you everything you want to know about making your own sauces and this week's Little Masters. But join me again after the break when it's beef and Yorkshire pudding on the menu for Judy Love from Loose Women. I'll see you after the break. Not that Lancashire pudding, Yorkshire pudding. Welcome back. Now, we're giving you a beginner's guide to making your own sauces in this week's Masterclass. And we've got more fantastic food on the way from Chef Sat Baines a little bit later. But first, I'm here with a woman who's at home both on Loose Women and on the comedy stages around the country. It's the very funny. Judy Love! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Judy, yes. Welcome to my house. Thank you. I, I mean, look, I've been trying to get up on here for a long time. We've I, been trying to get you. The I'm, dates have never, I never know, worked. I know, but, you know, you leave it to the universe. We're here now. I'm here with you. Your lovely home. Well, I mean... And you picked my favourite food to, to cook as well, because looking at all your recipes, I, I thought um, roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, onion gravy, I'm going to serve the best carrots ever. You know it's good because you've got Ralph there sat waiting for the beef He's to come so out. He's so sweet. He can smell it as well as it comes out of the oven. So I'm going to first of all, we're going to get on the carrots first of all. Uh, first of all, I'm going to get them to cook. But I want to talk to you about your life story because what a fascinating life story. <sighs> We've got Sir Cliff Richard in the house, but I know. yours yours matches that. To be honest with you, <laughs> it's a fantastic life story that you did. You always want to be a comedian? Was that always? It seems to me that you've done jobs, you 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 did stuff for this uh, social work and yeah. bits and pieces. Yeah. You made people laugh. Was that was laughter an integral part of your life? I think so. I think growing up, you know, in a, in a West Indian home, I grew up with a Jamaican parents, a single parent home, my mum. And, you know, for all the things that we've gone through, happy times, adversity... Because you've gone through a lot. Yeah. I mean, my, my mum, at your career, you've gone through an Definitely. Awful. And, you know, I was a child carer, so my mum wasn't well for some years. And But there was always laughter in the home. Good food yeah. and laughter. So, growing up, I was always that child at the family function that somehow made everybody laugh. And that pattern <laughs> <laughs> followed through in school, when I should have been doing a bit more work, right. uh, um, in my career, that finally ended me up on the stage. Because before the stage, it was... It was wasn't it... It was a, it was a modern technique, wasn't it? Instagram or, or social media what? that got you spotted in terms of television. Was that... Was that you, what... you know what? Funny enough, I was, I was working at a workplace when I was working in social care, and said, again, Instead of doing the work, everybody was laughing. But <laughs> someone said to me, you should do, com you should do comedy, stand-up comedy. And then it was just by chance, I worked somewhere there where there was a comedian there called Quincy, and I did an open mic, and from there it started to spur on. And I was doing a lot on the black circuit, which they call the urban circuit. And I did a lot from there, and then went on social media. 
and it just transpired from there. It just got bigger and bigger. Oh, I know you got one eye on the on this one oh, dude over here. So the Yorkshire puddings are in the oven. I've got my carrots on here. These are the best tasting carrots. So you've got Thank carrots, you. star anise, sugar, salt, and butter. Star anise? Yeah, they, 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 they call this in the style of Vichy. So the carrots are gone in there. It's a great way to cook carrots this Christmas, by the way. Brilliant. So your Yorkshire pudding recipe, I've done this a million times on the show. Eight ounces of flour, eight eggs, a pint of full-fat milk. Never. I've, I'm going to be honest, never made it fresh. You've never made it fresh? Have, have you gone to Auntie B's? Auntie, yes. Yeah. <laughs> let's, just, let's just change it to Auntie J's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how to do it fresh. Yes. Hot tray in the oven right. with a little bit of dripping in it, mm. which is beef fat. You can use lard if you want, but you dripping for you. Dripping yep. we've got in there. Yep. And we're just going to pop that in there. Now, the important bit is, is once you add the eggs and you add the milk, you then leave it to rest overnight. This is this, overnight. this crucial okay. bit. So you mix this together, full fat milk, mm. pop all that lot in there, mix together. This creates a Yorkshire pudding batter. That's it. That's it? That, it's three You're ingredients. You're joking. It's three ingredients, Judy. Look, look it's three ingredients. So you go around the supermarket aisle and buy a frozen one. I can't believe that. No, look. this is... I'm, I'm not looking back. I'm making my own You're Yorkshire not looking pudding. back then. No. Now, now tell, me, tell me about the comedy circuit, because you're, you're now on tour. You're taking this on the comedy circuit. You're... Your own tour. My own tour. What What is that like for you? Because I suppose when you're doing the comedy circuit, you're in the back room with every other comedians as well. You're chatting as well. You're getting support from everybody else. Yeah. Sm smaller auditorium. And then when you go into your own place, because I've just done a tour as well. Yeah. It is something spec. It, there's something really special. I say you've done TV. You do bits and pieces. There's something really unique about. It the theatres around the country are doing your own it tour. It really is. You see the beautiful theatres, then you see the people who's um, performed there before. And then, for me, it was seeing the poster. Oh, gosh, even when I think about it now. <laughs> with my, you know, my face and the dates and... Did you have message. a selfie with it? Well, no, I actually... I got a professional photographer. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. <laughs> I, but it was just seeing the poster and it's saying the One Light Judy Love tour, something I had dreamed of for years and, and at times questioned whether it was even possible. And then to know that I'm travelling around the UK in some of the most, like, iconic um, theatres was, you know, many times I've just walked away to the corner, shed a tear and came back. How do you look at that li on life now and then look at your your family that must look at you? you know, how do you, how does that... That because you're, you're I'm you're, trying to keep these eyelashes on this this morning, yeah. But, so but do, you know, do you know what I mean? How how does that that look? How does that go down with your family at home, your kids and stuff? Like that? How does that? I mean, with my children, I think they like my my daughter who's 18. Um, I think for her, she's seen the transition and she's like, oh my gosh, mum, you're, like, you're really doing TV. My son's like 14 and he's like, yeah. But when they come and they saw me at Hackney Empire, yeah, and I think that was the moment they were like. Wow, my mum's a comedian. You know, they know that Hackney Empire was one of the most iconic theatres, especially for black entertainment. So to then have my name up in lights at Hackney Empire and for them to come, it was an honour for them to be there, but also an honour to my parents and that community who that was their place of escapism. Well, also, it comes back to your, your upbringing as well and what you've gone through as well. well. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I just want to get on and do this this sauce, because I know you've got an eye on this as well. This is a nice little bit of... This is a red wine sauce. The key to this is reducing it all down. Now, if you see what's happened with these carrots... Look oh, at look at that. I've just reduced Ooh. these down. You just get these softened carrots. These are amazing this Christmas. You can do these the day before, even. Allow this to cool down, keep them in the liquid, mm. and then just warm them through. Really? Yeah. This is wine. I know you just said wine, but can I just say, this champagne brew, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, is delicious. Yeah, exactly. We're, we've got, we it's did yours. our three bottles, now we've got one. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know if you've got one, because my bag is feeling a little bit more heavy. <laughs> so, so, your Yorkshire buddies, look, instead of going around the aisle, this is you. Yorkshire pudding batter. So you get the tray in the oven nice and hot mm -hmm. and you pour the Yorkshire pudding mixture wow. in. So you pour it all in and it should sizzle like this. And the whole idea of it, as it sizzles, this is the key to it, it okay. starts to rise up the edge. That's the point. So if you don't get that sizzle, you're going to get flat Yorkies. Right, OK. So, that's so you need it to sizzle. So in there, fill it up really, really well. So the oven's set at 200 degrees and that goes in there. And I you... mean, look, what's 200 degrees? Gas mark or...? Gas? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Can I phone a friend? <laughs> gas eight, gas seven, eight. eight, something like hot. <laughs> you got a gas oven? I have got a gas I'm old school. Uh, I... Gas uh, seven or eight. Seven eight. or eight, Whack yeah. It on eight. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move over to the electric and... Eight. Yeah. Whack it on eight. Right, the beef. 
Sirloin oh, beef. That is a good bit. Sirloin beef. You just want some salt on it, a little bit of oil, nothing else. Just roast it in the oven. That's gone in there. I've just got one that I've been rested as well, but you just roast that off classically. A Johnny beef like this is going to take about an hour and a half. Mm. No more than that. So what are you looking forward to more than anything else, then? Are you looking forward to the... the obviously, you're halfway through the... Are you about halfway through I'm the I'm near the end. I'm near the end. Yeah, of but the, the tours, you, they, they say it's near the end. You do realise, once you I... sell out the Palladium, they'll go... We're going to carry on for another four weeks, four months. I've carry had a on. lot of people saying we need an hour, so there might be a few more dates. How are you I... finding that? With with you've got to, you've still got to mix your home life and everything else. How are you finding combining the two? I mean, work life balance goes out the window, doesn't it? But the joy is that I get the work that I'm doing is 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 purposeful. So I think that compensates for maybe the time that I'm gone. The kids are a little bit older. And they understand what mummy's doing. And I make sure it's about quality. I spend quality auntie time Auntie doesn't do these, though, does she? Auntie oh, doesn't do no, these. No, auntie no, doesn't do auntie these. <laughs> auntie doesn't do these, guys. <laughs> that wouldn't fit in a plastic container in the freezer. Exactly. No, no. <laughs> so, this, this you're going to cook nicely. We're going to reduce this all down that like that. That smells delicious. Now, I've got to mention loose women, because loose women is a perfect fit for you, though. It's, really? It's absolutely perfect. For, for me doing it, it's the most frightening show I've ever done in my yeah. entire life, when you come and done it. But it's it's a magical show to do, isn't it? Really? It is a magical show. And I, I say this a lot, you know. When you're, you're on a show with 20 women, mix and match, different kind of genres of expertise. I can go in my phone and mess any, message any of them about different things, children, mortgages, husbands, I mean, dating potentials. I can do everything. And someone has got, you know, advice on it. And it's lovely. And you go into work. You get dressed up and you have a good old chat. So it was it definitely, Loose Women was one of those moments where I was like, I, c I can't believe this is happening. And sometimes if you watch my Loose Women, you'll catch me for a minute sitting there kind of blank faced, but I'm really looking at the audience thinking, am I really here? But you on say stage? that, I was reading about that. You still get nervous when you're even, even on stage doing your tour. You still get nervous. I can't, of, of I can't believe that, really, because you, you come. But are you like a lot of comedians? You, you know, you've got confidence when you're on stage, but when you come off stage, this, this is a different you? Or? I need to find my name. You know, Beyonce's got her Sasha Fears. I need to have something that happens when I step on. Because I do find I am so nervous. I can't really talk to anyone for the last, like, five, ten minutes. And then they call my name. I go on stage and, you know, everyone cheers. And then I just go into that moment. I, I think it's, it's more about, like I said, wanting to feel feel the desire of the audience of feeling that joyful feeling. That's that's what pushes past the nerves. Well, you get that. Like I said, the Palladium sold out. Long yeah. may it continue as well. It's been a pleasure having you at the Thank house. Thank you. You're going to stick around because you've just bumped into Sir Cliff Richard as well, uh, haven't you? I mean, this was the week for you to have me on. Sir Cliff <laughs> Richard? I was like, yeah, I'm here. By the way, could you just sign this for me? He must be fed up with me by now, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but look, we've got a nice little bit of carrots that go over Ooh. here. But you see, you cook these. They're beautifully glazed. That's the key to that. And then this I is am, the finished sauce. Can I say, I am a sauce gravy lover. Well, I'll put an extra little bit of sauce with it. But oh, you take that your, smells so delicious. You take your oh. beautiful sauce over with your roast beef, your Yorkshire pudding. In the Yorkshire, babes. Oh! In the Yorkshire... <laughs> In the Yorkshire pudding as well. Judy, it's been a pleasure having the house. It's You're going to stick around for the end of the show as well. Of course I am. And I'll be cooking for you a little bit later. But there we have it. Roast beef with Yorkshire pudding, Vichy carrots, done. There you go, Judy. Dive into that one. Oh, that is a proper plate of food. That is a proper <laughs> plate of food. I mean, you should see what these carrots. Oh my gosh! Amazing. I think they're some of the best carrots I've ever had. <laughs> you said that, but yeah, you you live up to this, babes. <laughs> oh, I see. I see now why you're the shit. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> there we have it. Happy with that? Bye. You gonna stick around? Of course. Good. <laughs> I'll be right. I'll be treating Judy and uh, Sir Cliff to a classic chicken blanquette at the end of the show. And I'll be handing over the hobs to Mr. Sap Baines very shortly. But I'll see you after the break with a mass class in sauces that you don't want to miss. I'll see you then.
Welcome back. The genius chef that is Sat Baines will be sharing four simple recipes that anybody could cook at home. That's coming up shortly. Uh, but first, it's time for this week's Little Masterclass. And this week's Masterclass is all about sauces. And I thought this would be great to do around Christmas time. Now, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different recipes for different sauces. But we're going to start off with one of the classic mother sauces, they call them, uh, which are all the derivatives come from make basically about four or five different mother sauces. But you've got bechamel being the classic one. That's the first one. Like I said, if you add onions to this, you add a soubise. If you add cheese to it, you've got Mornay. You can get loads of different sauces from this. But the key to this is making this properly. And I say properly because most people just think it is flour, a little bit of butter mixed together with milk. But what you have to do, first of all, you must take the milk and warm it up and add the addition of this. This is really, really mm -hmm. important. It does change the flavour totally, which is called an onion clouté. You take the onion, take a bay leaf, you can use one or two, it's entirely up to you, and then we take some, some cloves and you stud the onion through the bay leaf with the clove. Now, this is called an onion clouté, I used to call this. I used to do this all the time when I was a young kid working in professional restaurants. And then you take that, and you allow this to infuse in the milk. It's really, really important. Same time, I'm going to pan on here because we're going to get on and do our other sauce, our next sauce, which is going to be with our nice little steak. Classic steak from the 1970s. Steak Diane. A beautiful, beautiful sauce to go with most meats, but particularly with steak, of course. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil. It's entirely up to you. And we're going to take that and pop our steak straight into our pan and I'm going to cook that gently. That goes in there. Meanwhile, just give my hands a quick wash, because then you can see you've got your milk warmed up like that. Once we got to that stage, allow that just to sit there and sort of macerate in there as well. While that's happening, we can then turn our attention to our sauce for our bechamel. So we're going to get the white sauce on as well. So this one, we take some butter like that. Now, usually, it's sort of equal quantities of butter and flour. It's entirely up to you, but it depends on what you're going to add to it. If you're going to add something like sort of a cheese, which I'm going to add, then I always put a little bit less flour in. But usually, with a white sauce like a bechamel, it's equal quantities of butter and flour. Then we take some plain flour, which we've got in here, add that to the pan, and whisk this together. Like that, only for about a minute or so, once you get to that stage, and then you pour in the infused milk. Keep it on the heat. What will happen is it'll go thick as a paste, like that. Keep going. So you add a bit more. Be careful not to add too much of the liquid straight away. We mix that together. And that is your classic bechamel sauce. Like I said, this would be classed as one of the mother sauces that all sauces come from. There's about five of them, really. And velouté being another one. Wines, red wine sauce being another one as well. But look, you've got a nice little bit of beef there. That's going to be for our little Diane. <laughs> so to finish off this, we can enrich this with a touch of double cream. And then we can add some cheese. This turns the bechamel into Mornay. We're then just going to grate our cheese, cheddar cheese for this one. And we're going to pop that into the pan as well. All that's going to go in there. A good glug <coughs> of salt and pepper. And this is one of the first sauces that we're going to make. So you can use your whisk again, and then we can take this sauce now and just melt the cheese nicely. You can see that happens quite quickly. There we go. You can enrich this with a little bit of mustard if you want, but that is your sort of classic Mornay sort of sauce. Make sure the cheese is melted over there. And I've got some cooked and cooled bit of cauliflower here. I like to keep the green on it, really, because I think there's so much flavour in, actually, the leaves as well. And then what you do is you take that and pour this over the top. I mean, just check that out. It's going to be great, this. And then more cheese. Like that. Steak is looking good. Because that steak we're going to turn into another classic, classic sauce. This time from the 70s, really, that one. So you take that. Bit of cheese on the top. And then take the whole lot of this and just pop it under the grill. Now, you can allow this to cook cold if you wanted to, and then reheat it. And to tell it to you, if you're going to reheat it, pop it in the oven for a good sort of 15, 20 minutes, like that. Nice high oven, so it's going to melt the cheese at the same time. But this, while it's still hot, straight into a hot grill, 
That's that one done. Meanwhile, over here, bring this one over. We're then going to make a classic 1970s sort of sauce to go with our lovely steak. Steak Diane. We've got the gubbins from the pan. The juices from the pan is what we need. So turn that down a little bit. Meanwhile, for this one, I want a touch of shallot. Now, I'm not going to actually pass this through a sieve, so it's important when you do this to make sure the shallots are nice and finely chopped. You don't want them chunky because we're going to serve these in the sauce. So you'll find a lot of chefs will cut them smaller once we're going to serve it in, bigger once we know we're going to pass it through a sieve. So a little bit of garlic, just a touch. I'm going to make one portion of it, a bit of that. And then I've got some mushrooms, which again we can chop up. And then I can take the garlic and the shallot now and pop it in the pan. And we want to cook that until they're softened. Doesn't take very long at all. We've got the other parts of our sauce over here. I've got a bit of brandy. I've got a touch of mustard. And for this, I'm actually going to use this. This is a little bit of veal stock, which is this. You can see it's jellified. You can buy this from the supermarket nowadays. It's in a fresh counter. It's up to you, but you just take a little bit of that. You can get the liquid form. It's entirely up to you, but as long as it's sort of nice, some stock, some beef stock, that's going to go in here. Then we've got some brandy. Now, it's important with the brandy that you flame it to get rid of that alcohol. That's the key. So have this ready. Take your brandy. All in. It's Christmas. Good, good glug. Take that. Flame it. What this is doing is just getting rid of the alcohol from it as well, so you get the flavour. Once that goes in, we can grab some of this stock. Now we turn the heat up. So what you want to do is then start to reduce this down. This is the key to this, this reduction side of it. Now, the reduction does two things. It strengthens the flavour of this, but it changes the texture of this, particularly when it comes to this sauce. So the steak's going to be allowed to rest. I'm going to move that off to one side. Meanwhile, we're going to get on and do our last one. But whatever we're doing, we're going to crank this really high. Because our last one is going to be a chicken base. We've got a few things to add to that one, but that the whole point about this, this is reducing it down now while our steak is left to rest. Because then I'm going to add some mustard, I'm going to add some cream, and that more or less finishes off our little Diane sauce. The other one, which I'm going to serve with chicken, is just a classic, simple little reduction sauce. Very, very easy to make. So for this recipe, we've got some wine. We've got a little bit of Madeira. It's important when you've got wine in a dish that you taste a little bit while you're doing this with a nice little bit of chicken stock. So this is a, this is a chicken stock sauce or a chicken sauce. Very, very simple. So we take our no onions, no garlic. Let's just show you how easy it is. But this one we're going to thicken with butter. So in we go with that. In we go with a bit of Madeira. Now we add our chicken stock. And this is where we reduce the whole thing down. So a little glug of each, a little bit of chicken stock, and we can add some tarragon to this. And now we bring both of these to the boil and reduce them down. This is really important that we reduce this one down especially. You can see this is reducing down now, this steak one, so we can add a touch of cream to this. Now, this one is the reduction that's causing it to thicken, this one. This one's slightly different. We're going to use a little bit of butter into here to thicken this one up. But either way, we've got to get this the right texture. By reducing it down, it gets that right texture. So a little bit of cream in this one as well. And we're going to re reduce both of these down. So this is the Diane one now to finish this off. We grab a little bit of mustard. This smells amazing, really. I've got a sauce sauna. Look at that. So reducing it all down. We'll grab our little bit of chicken, which we've got in here. We'll check on our cauliflower, which is looking pretty good. Our steak is there ready. So I can put that on here as well. That's our nice little bit of steak. Because things will all start to come together now. But you can see the difference, what I'm doing over here. This is really the essence of it. And this is where I think people go wrong, really, with this. They don't reduce it down enough. It's very, very important you take this and reduce it down and reduce it down. Because this changes the flavour of the sauce massively. The chicken, we can lift this off. Like that. A couple of the legs with it as well. Bit of that. Bit of that. 
And don't forget the chicken stock that I've got in there, you can still use this chicken juice as well. This, this, is, this will go into the sauce to make it. <clears throat> so keep that, you can freeze it really, really well. So the Diane bit, you can see this reducing down now. I can check the texture of this. A little seasoning. Reminds me from the 1970s. I was only young, but it is an absolute classic, that. So you take your little Diane, like that, and you take this with your mushrooms. It's just a simple little sauce. And one of these sauces that people don't really do, you don't really see this very often on menus anymore, steak Diane, but it is absolutely delicious. It really is. A little bit of that over the top. And you see the colour as this reducing down, that cream and a little bit of stock? It's wonderful. Now, this one is very, very different. What we do with this one is we load it with butter. This is very different. This is a chicken velouté. So you take this now and we add butter. This is where John Williams from the Ritz, I love when he comes on the show because he uses more butter than me. And he's the guy that does sauces better than anybody I know in the whole of the UK because you add the butter to it, and what this does is enrich it. This is the key to it. As you're reducing this down now, it enriches the dish. Now, all of these sauces you can prepare in advance. All these you can freeze brilliantly. When you just come to reheat them, freeze them, put them in ice cube trays if you want to, something like that, and you just pop them out of the freezer when, when you want them. So when the stock's available in the supermarket, go out and buy it. But we want to reduce this down a little bit. This is our nice little bit of cauliflower cheese. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Nice, thick, tasty, creamy, beautiful, enriched as well. But you see what I'm doing over here? This is the key to this. It's all about this reduction. It's one of those things that... I haven't got time to do that, but give it another three minutes, it changes massively the sauce. And I can see this is now enriched. It's got more butter in you can pop in as well. You'll be amazed how much butter goes in this. You can put more and more and more in it. This will enrich the sauce even more. So while that's happening, we can season this up. Some salt. Some black pepper. And then all we do is simply pour this sauce over the top of the roast chicken. And you've got a classic, classic white wine cream sauce. You can either do this with Chicken stock, or you can do this with fish stock, exactly the same way. But either way, it gives you a nice sauna while you're at it. But look, you can take your chicken and your sauce. This texture's beautiful, over the top. Flavour's amazing. We pour that over the top of there. And there we have it. A classic, classic sauce to accompany chicken. One to accompany a little bit of cauliflower and another classic sauce from the 70s, a little steak Diane. Easy as that. Yeah. Now, if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the last, last class, do get in touch with me, see if we can help out right here on the show. Time now for a quick break. Join me again in a couple of minutes, where Mr Sat Baines will be taking over the kitchen. I'll see you in a bit. My favourite is the chicken one. Welcome back. Now, I'll be hoping to impress my guests, Sir Cliff Richard and Judy Love, with a classic chicken blanquette very shortly. But first, I'm here with Lisa and Richard, and we're about to enjoy a dish and watch a chef who's been at the forefront of the food revolution in this country at his Nottingham restaurant for nearly 25 years. It's a good mate of the show and good mate of mine. It's Mr Sat Baines. Yeah. Sat, 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 what are you... you so when, you, when you cook, I love your food, but this is... This is you've gone off-piste. I have, yes. You've gone off piste. We've got, we've got over four dishes we're going to be doing. Well, they're quite quick, and I'm going to start in a minute. But the idea is, is to give you something very different, yeah. but still using the flavour that a chef of 36 years has got in his back pocket. Right. So how simple home-style food okay. can be done all... Now, this is relative to you as well, because so, this is relative to you. Not many people know this, but... No. I don't know how we kept it a secret, but... Yes. I wasn't 100% well. I had a heart attack in uh, 2021. I had a triple heart bypass. I uh, had to look at nutrition and my diet and cholesterol. And from that period, we wrote a book. And it's just coming out in the new year. But you were always fitness fanatic. You were always that. You were, you were, that was always a, a key to your, your life as well. This it, it must was, have been just yeah. like bolt out of the blue. It was and it is. But I think because I've got this degenerative disease, which is heart disease, 
I've had to relook at everything I do. And, yeah. you know, fitness probably saved my life. Because yeah. it was almost, they call it the widow maker, where all your arteries are blocked and you had a clot on it. Yeah. And I was very fortunate that... But if you weren't fit, this would have... I think, I don't know, it could have... The, yeah. the surgeons did say, we're, we're surprised to see you. Yeah. Jeez. So I was very. Well, it's fortunate. a pleasure to see you now. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> what, so what are we going to be doing now then? So what, what I'm going to do some dishes from the book. So the yeah. idea is is going to do a beautiful little uh, pork chop. The yeah. idea of this is it's so quite pork lean. Pork chops first. Okay. We've taken off all the excess rind and the fat. Yeah. So I'm just going to do one of them, and we're just going to season it with lots of pepper. And then what we do is. Now you season it well. You mentioned the book. This is the book, but you, you must have been working with some specialists as well when you were doing this. I as have. Well. Yeah, I worked with uh, Neil Williams, who's a. Uh, um, a lecturer, a, a scientist at Notts Trent Uni. Right. And it's great to have someone like that in your camp because he tells you all the little heart healthy ingredients. Yeah. Which is how we came about doing this book. Because the idea is, you, you know, we all cook at home. I wanted to showcase things that you can get from any supermarket. And this is the thing, I remember talking to you about it when you were writing it as well. You wanted all the ingredients you can get from the supermarket. Yeah. That's... I didn't want anything specialized. Obviously, as a chef, we've got some of the best produce in the world. What I'm trying to do is give you really accessible ingredients that you can buy every day. I'll let you wash your hands there. Well, thank you very much. There you go. So this is it, Satbane's Eat to Your Heart's Content. Um, this is the book as well. You say it's out in January? It's out in January the uh, 18th, and it's ready for February Heart Health Month. Amazing. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Well, good luck with it as thank well. You. So, thank you. So this is, this is the pork chop. You've just got a little bit of black, black pepper, a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt, not too much. So I'm going to let that caramelise slowly, and then what yeah. I'll do... I'll ultimately get that in the oven. Second okay. dish is a little beautiful Brussels sprout dish, because obviously this time of year, so it's this, all in season. This season we've got wafer thin. Brussels sprouts. We've got some shallots, we've got some ginger, we've got some garlic, some chilli, some cashew, and then some soy. And the idea is you get this beautiful combo. Right. So I thought it'd be nice to do something a little bit different. What have you put in there? So then? that's that? oil and then a little bit of sesame oil. So the two oils. So the reason that's why you use sesame oil is just going to burn otherwise. Yes, exactly. So you do half and half. So I'm going to pop that in the oven now. Thank you, James. There you go. In the oven, 185 for 10 minutes. Yeah, like perfect. 10, 15 minutes, yeah. So we're going to get this up. Yeah. And again, because it's wafer thin, everything cooks quickly, so it's almost like a stir fry. Mm. Yeah. And the idea of that is you get all that flavour. Obviously, these are going to break down quite quickly because of the, uh, the way that we've cut to them is so thin yeah. that you end up with that almost fast frying. Yeah. But also, so, you, want, you want that... Smokiness as well that you get with stir fry, like that patina. Yeah. That allows you to. Uh... You get that with a little bit of the sesame oil yes. together with the veg oil as well, mixed together, yeah. mixed two together. And then I'm going to get the other pan on now, and these are for the eggs. That's the back one. So soy sauce got in there as well. A little splash. And then you just put what you, you just put these. Just some cashew minute. nuts, yeah. Okay. Toasted cashew nuts, yeah. last minute. What was the most interesting thing you found out about doing this research in the book? Because that. I get the feeling you're going to research this and research this. What has been the fascinating thing you found? I think it's just the amount, how much importance food plays in, in your day-to-day -day diet. Yeah. And understanding what... You know, trying to understand the nutrition side of it and also the health benefits of it and diversity. So they always say, eat the rainbow. Yeah. That means you eat so, so many different varieties of, of uh, food. Varieties of foods, would you yeah. say? Yeah. I think the key is, and I think this is what I've learned mostly, is, is, is moderation. Is you've yeah. got to do, you've still got to enjoy life. I'm not going to become a monk. You know what I mean? Just, no way. I might have the head for it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I might have the head for it, James. But no way. Right, so, 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 so this these, is this is dish number three. This is so this shiitake is mushroom. Secret shiitake, is, as you know, is you've got to toast it. Right. You've got to get that lovely toasted, almost charred. Like you can smell that. It's almost like a dry This heat. is the chef's thing in you as well. Most people would add some, a little bit more oil to this and stuff. Not yet. It. I will in a minute, but not yet. Because yeah. I want that to just caramelise and toast. I'm going to pinch of salt. So tell us about the garnish for the pork, then. You're going to make... This so one. this is... Uh, you can do that, actually. We're going to mix mustard, three different mustards. Equal quantities of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously not so much of the, the English, because that would be too hot. It's like rocket fuel yeah. sort of stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Bit, bit of that. Oh, some Nixon Dijon and a little bit of the, the grain mustard. Is that cream with it? Oh. No, it's creme fresh. Oh, creme fresh. So instead of using yeah. yogurt or sorry, or, uh, or uh, mayonnaise or something like that, again, keeping it light. Yeah. So this becomes like a little sauce to go with it then? Yeah. OK. Which plate do you want that on? Uh, that would be the big one, yeah. The, uh, the famous one from... Uh, <laughs> that I got from, from France. France, yeah. yeah. There's and then what I do with these... called Georges Blanc, which I, I, I got this plate from him as well, so... A little bit of that, I'll let you plate it up as well. So what have you just added to this? So I've added a little knob of butter, 
the shiitake have now been sautéed with the butter and then also some uh, beluga lentils. Again, these are already pre-done, so you want the one that's in natural water or the ones in the pouch. You haven't got to spend all that time cooking them. It's interesting. I was working for the, for the NHS about, about 10 years ago, and they were saying butter, not margarine. No, it's, everything it's, whole it's, food. Yeah. It's Anything cream. touched by man yeah. is a negative. Yeah. That's really no semi-skin milk, it had to be cream. Full fat yeah, milk. To, yeah. Full fat milk, full fat cream. It had to be, it had to be food, you know? Yeah. It, food it's interesting you say anything that's been touched by us lot, stop it's, it from messed up. Yeah. And then these eggs are just uh, beautiful fresh eggs. I'm just going to pop these in there. So what happens is all the white soaks up all that mushroom fricassee yeah. and almost absorbs it so it becomes like a fried egg with... They're stuck inside it. OK. So it's a great way to capture lots of different... So I'll go get the pork chop and I'll get that, that, let you plate that up as well. Which looks amazing. This you've given it about 10 minutes, something yeah, like that? Something like that, yeah. That's that one. But that's nicely rested, that one. Yeah. So where are we going then? We've got these eggs dipping away there. Where are we going now? You've got dessert over here now. Yeah. So I thought, you know, let's go for it. It's Christmas. It's fine, you can just shoot. Yes. So <laughs> the last dish is uh, something, obviously, I love desserts. I love sweets, but I've got to be careful. So I've done a little uh, espresso. Yeah. Espresso coffee with um, ice cream, so it's like a affogato. But right. you just drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. That's incredible. Wow, OK. All right. So you look very surprised, though, don't you? Oh, well, I am actually with this, but go on, I'll let you. First time we've done so. It's an espresso hit with some ice cream and yep. a little drizzle of olive oil. Yeah. Right. Love it. Do you want a dollop of ice cream? A dollop of ice cream in there, please. Okay. And I love this. If I'm not sure what to have in a restaurant because I know the desserts are going to be super sweet or. Mm. Not necessarily healthy, but I've got to moderate it. Yeah. I'll have this. I'll have some espresso and a bowl of ice cream. I'll make my own. Yeah. And I think it's a great little cheat <laughs> to have something. <laughs> well, yeah, so. Everyone needs to be aware now because everyone's going to start asking for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, Excuse me, can we have some. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's that guy, that guy. You, it's yeah. nice how you just let that just gently, gently cook. And I think that's the key, that's the key into it. You still got to cook using your chef chefiness, but also I want to make it. The, the confidence, I want people to try this at home and say, you know what, I can do that. Because yeah. all that is is lentil, shallots and two fried eggs. But that is a brunch dish. That's got so much protein in there from the egg and the lentils. Well, I'm not going to do this just yet. I want you to finish off that. OK. So finish off that one. So that's that one. And then I'll get a plate ready for the eggs. Look at that. It's finished. Here. That's it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the two-star two Michelin touch, you see. I don't have it, you see. <laughs> Those eggs are going to be a little bit longer, aren't they? Just a yeah, tiny be, bit longer. Yeah, it'll be a while, yeah. And then, look, we've just got the ice cream. Now, the olive oil that you put on is pretty special, though, isn't it? So, yeah, Manny Olive Oil. This is one of the best olive oils from Tuscany in the world. This is where uh, he's got off piece from a supermarket. So yes. yes. Yeah. Sweet or peppery, or...? This one's quite peppery, uh, but I think something weird happens. We've been doing it a long time. We serve ice cream with olive oil, and it makes the ice cream even more creamier. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what scientists... Uh, where's this from? This is from Tuscany, so right. it's a Manny olive oil. Beautiful. And then while you're doing that, tell, tell us about the new venture that you've got over here, because this, this looks pretty special. What, so what this is the first batch ever, so you're the first chap that I've actually got you. This is number 90 of now. 90 <laughs> of our collaboration with the, the whiskey in Derby. And then this is the first tasting of it. That you're going to taste now. So yeah. this is there's only enough. This for is one. English. There's only, there's only one glass. This is English. You oak, did say, would you see? And beer? the oak is from Yorkshire. <laughs> so in honour of James, I thought it'd be a nice touch. Oh my word! Check out that. Kind of cool all that. So these eggs are done now. So what you do is you season it at this stage, guys. You never season Happy the Christmas. eggs too early. Otherwise, they start yeah, blistering. Then. That. That's pretty special, isn't it? Mm. So you know what? I'm yeah. going to serve that in the pan like I would at home. So you're going to serve that as it is. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I say cheers? Cheers. Good health. It's good to good see health. you. Good health. Thank, Thank you. Good Happy health. Christmas, guys. Cheers. Happy Christmas. Christmas as well. Happy Christmas. So there we have it. Give us your name mm -hmm. of the sort of three dishes, four dishes. You've got pork au poivre, three mustards, fried eggs, shiitake mushrooms, beluga lentils, stir fried Brussels sprouts with chili and cashew. And oh, and not the whiskey, and then the affogato <laughs> with extra virgin. The whiskey's not in the book, but that's in the book as well. There we have it. Sat Baines, everybody. <laughs>
So I don't know where you want to start with the buffet. I'm going to put the pan in between yes. the two of you, if that's all right. Bring it in. Yeah, I'm tired. this one. I'm going to give you the dessert because you've got spoons as well, so there you have it as well. That's a proper buffet. Meanwhile, <laughs> we'll have a, a little taster yeah, of we'll this. Have we'll, have, we'll have a little, little bit of this. Mm, I'll give you a little bit of the Brussels sprout that, mixture as it's well. It's like a family meal, this is oh, yeah. it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> bit of that. I love the colour of the sprouts. So the Brussels sprouts are better. But it's you, nicer because it's so quick, but everyone's so bored with chestnuts. Yeah. And, which is nice, but it's just a nice way to have it. But also, you haven't overcooked that. It's nice and quick. Yeah. That's genius. I love the um, it's nice, the mushroom. Love it, yeah. But it soaks so, the, yeah, yeah, the white. Yeah, so, so you can imagine doing that with anything, with yeah. seps, with delicious. whatever. Yeah. Just soaks. So the bigger. olive oil makes it as well. Oh, it's yeah. just absolutely delicious. Like you it. said, it's like there we have it. The legend is the sat bain, everybody. <laughs> Right, we've still got time for one more final recipe. So join us again after the break. We'll be treating Sir Cliff Richard and Judy Love to a show-stopping chicken blanquette. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back, sadly, to the last part of the show. Oh. But I'm back in the kitchen with Lisa Goodwin-Allen, Richard Bersonet, Judy Love, and last but not least, Lisa, Sir Cliff Richard. <laughs> Happy Christmas, guys. Happy so Christmas. I thought with this we'd do a wonderful dish for you. I thought we'd do a, a classic with homage to the Frenchman over there. Thank so you. we'll do a, a chicken blanquette, usually done with veal. It's a chicken stew. It's brilliant for Christmas. So we're going to serve that with some pilar rice. The first thing we're going to do is portion up our chicken. We tart off with our chicken like this. We're going to cut it up, take the chicken, whack it through, and you cut through and you take the crown away from the legs. Like oh, that. wow. So then you can cut this into four pieces. We can cut that through like that. That was that one. And then we cut through the legs and the thighs, which is cut through there. So there's no cutting through other than bone through that bit. This is through the joints. So your legs and your thighs through there, and you cut through your legs and your thighs through there. This, you turn your attention to this bit, you cut it through there, whack it through. That's one piece. And you do the same thing with that one. Pop it through. That's another piece. Question. Yes? How can we get the cleaver? That's How can you get the cleaver? <laughs> uh, you can speak I to mean, me nicely. You can have it. You can take it home. <laughs> <laughs> but this, and you cut it through. There you have four pieces of white meat, four pieces of dark meat. And we're going to add that to the pan over here. Now, first of all, Judy, I've got, got to mention the fact that you're, you're finalising your tour at the iconic Palladium. I know. I, do you know what? Even hearing you saying it, I'm like... Yeah, I am, aren't I? I'm at the Palladium. <laughs> it's, it's a phenomenal place. I'm sure you've played there many uh -huh. times. Yeah, yes. so, hello. I'm going to play somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can finish the bead. I mean, I, I'm so excited. Um, and I'm Nervous? Waiting. I'm very nervous. Do you get I'm, nervous at all? Course? I do. I've got this big persona, but trust me, even before I was coming on here, <laughs> I get really nervous. But to be at the Palladium, yeah. I went there to have a quick look, see what it was like, and do a little video, and I, I burst into tears. <laughs> As soon as I stepped on the stage. Well, I, I, when I've, 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 done, I've just finished my fourth tour. I ended at the Palladium. But you must have played that. What was the, what was the most magical place you've ever played in, in, in terms of your, oh, your... For me, for me, the, the, the uh, Albert Hall is the most magical wow. place for me. It's got a fantastic, intimate, intimate feel. Yeah. <clears throat> really good. Well, have, you ever, have you ever played it using... Because the, the organ is supposed to be absolutely amazing there, the organist as well. Have you ever incorporated that with your music? No, or? no, we haven't. We, I've got a very kind, a very good pianist. And if, he, if I got an organist, then he'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you know where your loyalty lies. <laughs> yeah. Right, so we've got... This is, so we've, this is your chicken stew, basically. What you do is you take the chicken, you then put everything in it. So rather than the usual stew where you brown everything, yes. this one you do completely opposite. You don't touch it. You just bring it to the boil, pop the lid on, and then we pop it in the oven. So this roasts in the oven, and you want to roast this for a good 45 minutes to an hour. Now, classically, you can serve this with what... You can do this with a little bit of salad in France, but I like pilar yes, rice. Salad, pilar rice, nice. Pilar rice. So you take off with some onion. We're going to do a mushroom pilar. A little bit of basmati rice, some mushrooms over here. Slice through with some onions. Cook it without colour, exactly the same thing. And then rather than stop, we're just going to add some water to this. And then the whole point about this is this sauce. So you they, basically you pick out the chicken, like Lisa's doing over here, Portion it into your little pot like that, and then we put it back in the oven to keep warm, because then this is the sauce that we then finish off. But I'm going to do my little pilar rice over here. Now, Cliff, we've got to mention again, because 
these people who are just waking up this Saturday morning may not know that you're here to... to, to well, you're here because this is the several times you've been here, but you're here because you've got, you've got a double whammy. You've just finished the tour, you've got an album and a book. So what should we talk about first? Wow. Both. <laughs> talk about... Both. <laughs> <laughs> let's that, talk, let's talk well, about the book, because this, well, the... I mean, this is something special. I know you're into music as well, but yeah. when you look at these pictures, Jerry Lee Lewis, all these amazing artists from the 50s and the 60s, Yep. You can't get this on mobile phones anymore, no, these amazing but, pictures. But the book, I did the book because I wanted people to know that people like us don't make it on our own. If it hadn't been for Elvis, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, the Everly Brothers, Jerry Lee Lewis, we wouldn't have anything to look up to. And you, and were, they, saying they, that, they, you were saying all the, all the famous, famous guitarists, people like Matt Knopfler and yes. Eric Clapton, all, all, they're, 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 they're their inspiration came from Hank Marvin in your Hank band. Hank Marvin and, and, and the pink guitar that he played, which I bought. <laughs> That's really? Why I the fact. Well, he couldn't afford it. Mm. And he said, if we had a friend of Stratocaster, we could change our sound. So I said, OK, and I ordered it. And it but we didn't order one. We didn't know it was going to be pink. But so what, anyway. I, to, I went out and got a pink jacket. Right. <laughs> I couldn't. But it was a Hank, and Hank became somebody that all these Brian May, Mark Knopfler, these people have written up, I've read the things, and they said they've got to be guitarists because of watching Hank and his pink guitar. And I kept saying, Did you say he was left wasn't... handed as well? Hmm? Did you say he was left handed? No, he was right handed. Right -handed. But the guitar is a right handed guitar. And last year when I toured, I did three songs on which that guitar played solos. So I, I, I got it back, gave it to my guitarist. And then we realised that he is left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> we all play like this. So this guitar, therefore, was turned that way upside down. And you can't change the strings. It's still... So he learned how to play it. And he, he got the most fantastic reception when I said he just played those solos That's incredible. upside it down. Incredible. Yeah. Terrific, yeah. Right, look, we're just going to take our little mushrooms over here. So the pilaf rice I've cooked. That's got a little bit of the... Uh, we put a little bit of... Uh, Greaseproof paper on it, which is in here. Which is that one? So you lift that off. That's oh, your wow. nice little peel of rice, oh. which is done with the wild mushroom, with the mushrooms anyway. Over here, I'm just going to saute some mushrooms off. But what, what oh, is it about? Real. What is it? What is about touring and stuff like that? You still love? Is it? Is the fact that you? Because nowadays the music industry has massively changed. I mean, the comedy oh. circuit is exactly the same thing, and it now you've got to get out on the tour. It's very similar to the music thing. It used to be DVD sales. Yes, but now the tour is the heart. Yeah, now yeah, yeah, the tour yeah, is the same yeah, thing. People don't buy records anymore, but there's a thing about... For me, if I could record every day of the year, I would go into a studio. But, of course, really? it's hard to find 365 songs to record. <laughs> but, but, but going on tour is the second favourite thing. Because that's when you reach out to the people. Connect. Yeah, yeah. You connect with these people that have supported you. But also, globally-wise, really, where, but was there a moment where... I, I've always wanted to ask you, where was there a moment where you thought, this is, this is it? Because there must have been a moment quite early on in your career going, this is, this is crazy. Because you wanted to be Elvis, you wanted... The, the very stuff... The first time I ever heard Elvis on that car radio thing, uh, that's what I, I thought... <laughs> that's what I'd like to be. Mm. And, and, and then sometimes, when my career started, they'd say, Cliff is the answer to Elvis. And I used to say to the journalist, no, Elvis is not a question. You can't be an answer unless it's a question. Elvis is the king and always will be. And, of course, even Michael Jackson would have been impressed in some ways. But uh, all of us. Yeah. We, we've got so many th people you, that we... Do you we've... think that's ever going to happen again? Because you look at the magical times, I think... 80s was an amazing thing for music. I know you were in the 80s as well. That was a magical time as well. You managed to do that per decade, but you've seen that for the 65 years. Do you think there's going to be a decade like the 50s, like the there's, 60s? There's no reason why it shouldn't be, but it's going to be different. If you don't buy records, then that, that whole thing gets dumped. And therefore, the, the way we made our singers money is you make a record, and that sells, and then you go on tour to sort of support it. You now go on tour to make your money, and the record just is an advert. And it's so quick. I think that it's so, music is so, so more accessible, and the people that make it from via social media or so on, and you don't even have to have a record label. It, yeah, so it's... it's, it's the it's only nice. trouble is, I don't know about you, but uh, people say to me, listen to this, and they've got iPhone, and I'm going... And it just sounds like... <laughs> it sounds like a tinny... Yeah. You can sometimes say, oh, she or he sings well, but... You see, I like listening to stuff on 
Al proper Speakers. albums. I like yeah. listening to jukeboxes, that kind of stuff. I just think it's a, there's oh, a magic yeah, yeah, magical era. Great. Look, it's so we just got it. We got our rice oh, yeah. over here, which have, which I've cooked. Oh, yeah. We're nearly there with our chicken. So this is our chicken with our mushrooms in. We've got our croutons. We've got our nice little peel of rice. This is the key to it. This is the bit where our you want me to do this, don't you? Yeah, you're doing it. You mess it up, it's your Yeah, this is, this, is, this is the last bit where you can make a complete mess of this. Uh, because what we do with this one is you put in this thing called a liaison. Now, what the liaison does, is you can see this mixture is quite watery. Um, what the liaison will do is thicken it all up. So this thickens it up. So we take tarragon, which has gone in there at the beginning. We take it's a bit tarragon... Like a isn't it? It's a bit like a custard, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but this is where we've got to really watch that's it. That's so time, is it? That's a little bit of tarragon, tarragon. got in there. Oh, tarragon. But then... We take this mixture. Now, if you don't put, if you put this in and boil it, it's ruined. It's scrambled eggs. Split. So you pour this in, and it's a good idea to season this beforehand. So plenty of salt and pepper, like that, like that. This is where Lisa stands back, and I've got to do this. Why have I got to do this? You've got, you've got Mrs. Star. Why have I got to do this? Do you know what? This is the moment, and as much as I'd love to cook live, this is the moment where I just sip my glass of wine <laughs> oh, yeah, and sit back. Yeah. <laughs> so we just mix this together like that. And then this just thickens up. Now, we need to put this over the top just till it starts to thicken nicely. So that's not far off. It's all put science. it back on again. It's all science. Well, the it? thing about it is, it's got egg yolks in it. And you, you treat it like a custard, really. So as you start to mix it, the, the bubbles should start to disappear. You see the bubbles start to yeah. disappear now? Yeah. So it starts yeah. to thicken up. So I'll do it with a spoon. As the bubbles start to disappear, now it starts to get thicker. I didn't think I'd be doing this with you watching, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look, taking notes, mate. You see you've got this oh, yeah, thicker yeah. mixture? That, that yeah, like look that. at that. And then you take the mixture and you pour that Ooh. over the top of the chicken. Oh, my God. Could that be a soup? This could be a soup. <laughs> if you want to take this home and this is a soup, that is a soup. <laughs> does, that, can... does that go back into the oven? Or... That just leaves as it is, exactly as it is, and you just take this chicken out now, and you can take the piece of chicken like that, Oh, so the With the mushrooms. The and from the... Oh, I see. A Bits and pieces. Delicious. So then yeah. you've got the sauce, you've got everything. It's a magical, magical dish. And it's what a dish that I wanted to do for both of you guys. That looks delicious. For With Christmas. The there it is my chicken blanquette. With pilau rice. Well done, Jeff. We've done it. Uh, done. Uh, it's not split. <laughs> Cliff, that's for you. Oh, thank you. Right, and then you want the brown meat, is that right? Yes, please. A little please. bit of brown meat in here. Oh, my God. A bit of brown meat for the brown meat. I'll give you, the, give you a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of thigh. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of thigh, which is on there, and a little bit of the rice, the pilo rice, which is there. But then don't forget, you need it with a heart-shaped crouton on the side. Oh, OK. Because oh, that's yeah. how you eat it with. That's yours. Oh, well, that's supposed to wait. Yeah, you just got... No, you can... Oh, wait. Good boy. Come on. <laughs> you can crack on. Don't crack wait. on. <laughs> Richard. Chop it away. Yeah. Yeah, Richard, you get to dive in as well, but I'll oh, give yeah. you a little bit. You, you've, got the, you've got the pan, if that's mm. all right, Lisa. Oh, I love that. Is that all right? Yeah, got... absolutely. How is that, anyway, with the sauce and the, the little bit of the rice? Absolutely. I think it's super, super tasty with the rice mm. and the sauce and everything else. The rice has mm. got a sweetness It's lovely, to isn't it? it? Just a little bit. Have a, have a taste of this. You, you just have it. I want to get in there. Mm. Gorgeous. It hasn't split. That's really good. I had a sleepless night because of this last <laughs> night. That was, I was cooking for you two. In fact, all four of you, five of you, so that's, that's <laughs> taking flight. But I'm thinking, I've got to create this for all you lot. But I'm happy with that. But there we go. Perfect end to a perfect Christmas show as well. Uh, that's all we've got time for today. A massive thank you to all my guests. Uh, Lucy Handley from that amazing trout farm. Sat Baines, who's, like I said, has got a fight. Lisa Goodwin-Allen, Richard Bertonet, and, of course, Judy Love and Sir Cliff Richards. <laughs> Good luck with the tour, good luck with the album, good luck with everything. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Well, thank you. No, thank well, I'm you. just I'm just here every day. I'm not going anywhere. You can, <laughs> you you can come back whenever you want. There we go. I'll see you back at the same time next Saturday morning where the countdown to Christmas continues with Jess Gareth Ward, Richard Corrigan, Brian Turner, and Strictly Come Dancing, Shirley Ballas will be here. No doubt Cliff will be here as well. Until then, <laughs> take care. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Have a great weekend. Uh, thank you.